Right, let's get into the first leg of our conversation tonight. And it is with the new Nigeria People's Party, the NNPP, which has vowed to make a showing in the coming election. So we're going to be taking a look at the strategy and the policy plans of the party. Essentially, this will help you make your decision. And um, I, I know there's lots of candidates, 18 of them vying for presidency, but uh, breaking these issues down should make it less cumbersome uh, for you, the voter, after all. We have 72 days to go. And joining us to do that tonight is the national chairman of the new Nigeria People's Party. He joins us live from our Abuja studio. Uh, good evening, Professor Rafai Alkali. It's good to have you on the program. Hello, Gaia, dear. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Uh, we'll talk about the manifesto of your candidate. I know he's asked Nigerians to create time uh, to study that manifesto, and we'll get into some of the details. But uh, some recent occurrences, as it were, and you were part of uh, that meeting, I believe, uh, be between your party, the NNPP, and APGA. I know there had been speculations about a possible collaboration between your party and another and some life was given to that, it will seem, with that meeting on Monday. So if you could tell Nigeria, seeing those images and seeing uh, what, I mean, the speculations are, what exactly is the nature of this collaboration, if you will? Thank you, Kayode. Well, I want to uh, thank you first for this um, invitation for this program for today. And... Uh, uh, we are very happy with what channels have been doing, especially in advancing the course of democracy in this country over the first few months, especially uh, since we started campaigns nationwide. Now, I know that whenever uh, NMPP is mentioned and then other parties are mentioned, there's always a lot of interest. But I believe now, Kaido will do me a favor that I will not disclose anything in detail of what we are discussing with ABGA or this presidential candidate for now. Uh, in our own strategic plan is to do a lot of homework behind the scenes. Then when we have reached a point of talking, we can come out to the press and to the general public and speak. But for now, I don't want to go into it. So indeed, you confirm that there are discussions going on with ABGA. No, we have said that uh, NMPP is doors are open because what you are talking about, you are talking about the future of our country is not a personal matter, it's not an individual matter, it's the issue of the future of our country. And we have also been saying consistently that anybody or group of persons that share our ideals, share our vision, our aims and objectives about the future of our country, will be willing to talk to them but on the basis of mutual respect, uh, so that uh, whatever happens, it is for the benefit and glory of our country, Nigeria. Mm. Indeed. I know your party has said time and again that well, it will not be going into any alliance with either the APC or the PDP. So saying this will make a lot of people wonder. And you'd understand if speculations are rife that is a party now you know, stepping back on that stance which it had that, you know, there's not going to be any sort of alliance. But particularly ABGA. ABGA is a strong party. A lot of people know, especially in the southeastern part of Nigeria. So is there any reason why ABGA is the choice? I mean, without, of course, going into as much details, but indeed to let people know what is going on so there will be less speculations about uh, what the state of things are. Well, I think the issue of other political parties, you mentioned PDP and APCs, these parties, they feel they are too big. They feel that uh, they don't need anybody today. They believe they have already won the elections. Uh, they are just waiting for the day they will be sworn in as president of this country. So, uh, and I think most of us who have been part of these political parties before, uh, knowing the antecedent and the way they are doing things, we know that we are going to end up with the same trouble we are having today. So for now, uh, over the past few months, what has been happening is that uh, some of them who could not be able to secure the kind of, uh, you know, massive support they were expecting from Nigerians, they, keep, they kept on, you know, throwing the kite, mm. uh, asking one presidential candidate or the other to step down for them. And uh, we said this is a democracy where the election should hold. 
And if you want election to hold, and then you have now the opportunity to go and campaign and present your case to Nigeria, why do you want somebody to step down for you? Why not go and face the people and then tell them what you're going to do for them differently from what you have been doing in the past? So that's why sometimes we are not amused with what they are saying, all this dragging our party that we are going to do this for them, we are going to do this. We are very serious people, we are, and uh, we are very committed to the transition in this country. And we don't want anybody to undermine in whatever form. I mean, while you say, Prof, that you, you don't want to give out much details about what's going on, just right after that meeting, I mean, your spokesperson, uh, Mr. Agbo Major, is quoted as saying... Kayo Day, you'll be, you'll be the first person to know when the time I know, to speak. I know, I understand. The first but just, person to know when the time comes for us to speak. Of course, I appreciate uh, sure, that. I promise you. I appreciate that. But just to clear the air, because some information is out there already. So um, he said that whatever arrangement will likely come into play... Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, Prof. Uh, I, I imagine you can hear me. Right. Are you with me now, Prof? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Oh, that's great. I, I was just going to, I mean, this just take it as the last point on this one, because it's important to make. Your spokesperson, Mr. Agbo Major, is quoted as saying that whatever arrangement will likely come into play, we'll see whoever is coming queue behind your presidential candidate. So that much is out there, even though you don't want to divulge as much information, but that much is out there. And it's, it's reported in the Daily as a Tribune uh, spoke to him. So I know that you had issues with the Labour Party trying to come up with an alliance earlier on. Uh, but really, at this stage, uh, how sure are you that a political party like Abga who wants to queue up behind your candidate, knowing fully well that it already has its own presidential candidate, who was in that meeting as well? <laughs> Kayo, you, you are persistent and you are insistent. And uh, I told you that some of the strategic issues, I don't think it's time for us to share them now. And I, I think, uh, you know, the whole thing is that uh, we don't have any issues with Labour. Uh, Labour are uh, just a margin force in this country, uh, just like an MPP. Uh, because when we started the journey, most of our, a lot of Nigerians uh, took us for granted, especially the two major political parties or two older political parties. And we have told them that, no, it's good for them to underestimate us. For us, we have our strategies, we have our plans of actions, we have ways of doing things which are completely different from what they have been doing, the older political parties. And... Uh, Again, without, uh, you know, trying to divert your attention from your question that you are pers persistently asking, our own concern is just to build a base because this is a mass movement. The NNPP is a, is a, is a national movement. And uh, if you look at the kind of acceptance the, country, the party has, as I received from Nigeria, uh, to us it's unprecedented given the time since we did the merger in March this year. So for us, like we said, our doors are open, and any strategic discussion we have with other persons or group of persons, we'll keep it to our chest for now until the time comes for us to share it with the rest of the country. Mm. But Prof, is this a sign of weakness, maybe? Because your candidate has been vehement, very confident, saying that, well, with NMPP, we're going to clear the election. So with this move to perhaps seek some sort of collaboration merger, is it that... The signs are now getting clearer for NNPP that maybe you can't do this alone. Maybe the other parties have more power. Is this a sign of weakness? No. Uh, you have forgotten that every day counts in politics. And you know also every vote counts in politics. So if you are going to spend time going to various states in the country, various local government, various communities, uh, reaching out to people, conversing for support, conveying our messages of goodwill, educating them about our manifesto. Does this stop us from talking to other people in other political parties uh, that we think or they think we are going to uh, collaborate at a particular stage in, in the process? It could not be now, it could be later. What is important is that uh, so far we are comfortable with where we are and uh, I want to assure you that our leader and the presidential candidate, Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso, has been going around in the first the phase of our campaign. If you see, it's different from what others have been doing in the past. In the past, what, the, what in fact, what you are seeing even now is how the political party, what they are doing, like the case you have shown in Nigeria today. 
after spending a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of energy, you come and speak for one minute, and then you say it's over. Why do you go there? It means that you are not sure of what you are doing. They already the fatigue has started setting in. So we have the, uh, is, is several, several layers. And one of the first layer that the, our leader, the President Secretary of NMPP, Sir Rabbi Musa Hunkos, has been doing, is a straightforward one that we spend all the time, initial months, to go and reach out to our communities, to our people, to reconnect with them. Some of them we have not visited for a long time. Some of them have been, you know, facing difficult challenges, either in relating to environmental factors or whatever. Some of them have lost so many things. So the first thing is to reconnect with the people. After, after doing that, then you come and now begin the Big Bang. And I think by that time, Nigeria will know the difference between oil and water. We'll get into maybe the projections, because I know politicians usually do your projections and you try to see where your chances are and where they are not. But let's talk about your party's manifesto and quite a number of points there. And you've maybe touched on some of them, really. Uh, revamping the economy is key for your candidate, expectedly, really. I think it just ranks top for all candidates, the economy, security, but particularly around the economy. Uh, I said that, you know what, you have an economic plan centered around people their family, improving income level, strengthening the purchasing power of every Nigerian citizen. Recently, uh, we saw figures of the multi-dimensional uh, poverty level of a country. 133 million Nigerians are multi-dimensionally poor, according to the NBS. And I know that the NNPP, particularly your candidate, uh, has this you know, movement, the Kwankwesiya movement, the movement for the Talakawa, he says. And those are regarded as the masses, the poor people. Now, if your party is saying, your candidate is saying, you want to lift people out of poverty, I mean, some might ask, isn't that contradicting, I mean, the support base you have? So who will be left to support your party? Who will be left in that Talakawa movement, which your party derives its strength from? So is there a way to delineate that for you? Well, I think, you know, up to recently, the popular debate and uh, intellectual debate has been that development and democracy are two sides of the same coin. But in recent times, the focus of Nigerians is that also the economy, the issue of economy and security are also two sides of the same coin. Therefore, you cannot tackle the issue of security in Nigeria without tackling the issue of the economy frontally. And you cannot tackle the issue of the economy without taking the issue, tackling the issue of security frontally. Therefore, that's a, a, a part of the manifesto of a, a presidential candidate is that these things are going to be done simultaneously. And that's why, for example, he placed a lot of emphasis in saying that uh, the security sector now is under man. Given the total population of Nigeria, given the size of the country, given the complexities of the security challenges, both the police and the military, they are fully, totally under man, including the other security services. Therefore, the attention should be on those areas. And in, so, in tackling this, these areas also, it is hoped that employment will also be created. Why? Because if you don't secure the country, even the oil that now we have been depending on over the years, now we are not exporting as much as what we should export based on the OPEC quota. So, and then there's a lot of leakages, a lot of thefts, a lot of, you know, wastage, a lot of corruption all over the place. So unless this thing, uh, this thing are tackled frontally, it's not going to be possible. So that's why if, the first thing is to make sure that you create, you make sure you mob a, a number of these uh, youth away from the street and get, engage them in this kind of services. And they will be very useful and effective. But at the same time, in addressing the economy, the fundamental is also the education. Because what, the, what everybody knows about is that Rabbi Musa Konkosa, you can never take it away from him, and there is no presidential candidate today that can match him with that record, is what he did when he was the governor of Kano. So in promoting education at every level, providing scholarship for uh, students, women, young men, and young boys, both Kano indigenous or non indigenous He has established several universities. Mm -hmm. So he, has, he knows the system very, very well. And that's why today he also said the first he's going to do from day one is to make sure that he scrap all these fees that are being now imposed on parents and children, especially in terms of WAEG, you know, NECO, uh, NAPDIV, and uh, even JAM, so that people will be able to 
have access to education. Access is the most critical issue. So I believe, we believe that if you educate the citizenry, it will make, make it much easier for people to stand up and protect the system. Now, the question you asked about the telecowers, oh, do you believe that every concosia is a poor man or every poor man is a concosia? No, that's not the, 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 there's no correlation between the two. Concosia is a part of a movement that is the, in defense of justice in the, the defense of progress. And that these young men are young women who are passionate about what Sir Rabbi Musa Kukosa is doing. Kano is now being trusted at the national level, saying that we must defend our country, we must defend our, uh, defend our sovereignty, we must defend our society, so that everybody will have a role to play. So we hope that because uh, if uh, they move away from being the poor and become, uh, you know, uh, they can afford a reasonable condition of living, then does it mean that they, have, uh, they are no more relevant in politics? It's empowerment. Uh, every city must be empowered. Therefore, all the issues are related. Security, right. economy, education and everything and what okay. we are saying here today is that having gone through all the levels as a governor as a senator as a minister as a, you know he he has he has touched every level of governance and it's easy okay, for him prof. to go and let's, let's wind more, down on this. Uh, hitting the ground and start running he doesn't right. have to wait for six months or seven months or eight months to construct a government to run well, like prof, this let's, country. let's wind down he has on a vast point. network and goodwill around the country and okay. that's why everybody is saying that I don't know if you can hear me. We have to uh, anchor soon. But the, the point is, I, I know politicians have been accused of weaponizing poverty, which, I mean, people say that's why a lot of people throng around them. It's easy to, you know, e e engage in vote buying and all this tokenism. So uh, it's important to tell Nigerians whether or not this contradicts with the Talakawa movement, which means essentially the commoner. And, I mean, you've made that point. But on a final note, he also promised uh, that there will be an improvement in terms of income level of Nigerians. I know the Labour Party promised, what, between 80,000 and 100,000. We've seen other parties also promise as much. Is that also a promise you're making to Nigerians, that the minimum wage will be higher than it is right now, and at what level? You know, you know, public policy, you know, at some stage is not an individual matter. It's a collective matter. What we, the, the president can do is to, uh, to, to commit himself to the principles that the conditions of the civil servant today is not the best for any civil servant in this country. The fact that uh, what you can say, uh, the wage that is our citizens earn cannot take them home. But apart from that, even those who manage to survive through 35 years or 60 years are retired, they don't get their benefits. So while you are serving, you are in trouble. After you finish, you are in trouble. And everybody requires this protection, a safety net for the ordinary citizen so that he can live. Apart from employees, civil servants, remember there are also farmers, there are also traders, there are also artisans. All of them, some of them are no regular salary earners. But the system must be able to protect them All through right. inclusiveness. And that's why one of the strategies uh, the, our presidential candidate is adopting is what you call the community participation and uh, reorientation program, where so indeed, from the world level to the local government level to the state level to the zonal level to the national level, there will be a series of community committees, wow. 11, 11, in, which will in, uh, comprise the traditional rulers in the place, the clergy, the ulama, well, prof, the usually leaders, and then the woman leader, and, uh, yeah, everything. But I just wanted so to that be sure. Everybody will be involved in managing their resources. That is going to be now deployed from national to the lower level. So but you are these saying policies essence, have to be now um, to walk through the there is national no figure, assembly if so you can that hear me. everybody will be involved. Right, so, so there's no target, that there's no goal. These are critical stages that are not there available to other political parties. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me. So you are saying in essence that for now there is no goal for or a target for what the minimum wage would be like if your candidate were to win the election. Coyote, your voice is a bit low. Can you raise your voice? Uh, believe me, I am actually speaking almost at the top of my voice. But the question is, uh, are, are you putting a figure to it? Are you saying there's no figure to the minimum wage? It, it, this are, you are talking about a policy. 
Right. A policy has to go through processes. Okay. A gov- yeah, for example, a governor cannot sit down today and say, I'm going to do minimum wage. He has to go through a House of Assembly. All right. At a national and I think level, the point... a president cannot sit down and say, this is what I'm going to do. It has to go through National Assembly. Rather through, you have to carry all the stakeholders and right. involve them. Well, so thank what you, Prof. I think that, that point has been the made. NNPP is offering something different, something fresh. Right. I, I think the point has been made. Uh, you're essentially saying that, well, you wouldn't put a figure until there is some sort of deliberation across all levels. But I'd like to thank you so much, Prof. Uh, thank you for your interventions on those issues. We've been speaking with Professor Rufail Kali, who is the national chairman of the NNPP, joins us from our Abuja studio. Thank you again, Prof, for your time tonight.